Hi, and welcome to Reviewing the Basic and Intermediate Techniques of Active Inspire. It's Dr. Steve from Misericordia University. Welcome to our online class meetings. It's good to see everybody here online. I do miss you uh, from in-person face-to-face -face classes, but here we are, and I'll still enjoy engaging with you online. Just so you know how we're going to conduct our online classes, I'm going to create a folder in Blackboard uh, of activity for each day that we would traditionally hold class. I'm expecting that most, if not all, of our activities are going to be asynchronous, which simply means that you don't have to meet at Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at a certain time, but rather uh, you can work at your, at your own convenience. By now, I'm thinking that you already saw our first task listed in the first online days folder, and that is to simply download and install the Active Inspire software. Now realize that the software will work on Windows, Mac, Linux. It'll work on any computer. It's just not going to work on mobile. So don't try to download it on phone or tablet or iPad or anything like that. So download the software and remember um, it's for free, and just like we were doing in class, when you first load it in, when you first open it, um, it's going to prompt you to possibly add your name and registration number and all that, but skip all of that. Go right down to the bottom uh, where there's a checkbox where it will say, uh, I agree to the terms of use, and then uh, go to the uh, little button on the lower left-hand side of the of the screen that will say run the personal free edition. To get you familiar with our online methodology, well, we're going to try to run it like we do in face-to-face -face class meetings. I'm going to upload a resource, a resource for you, so it'll be some file, and I, as I always say in class, for you to cook along with me, um, as on the uh, food channels. The only difference is I'm not going to be live, but rather you, you'll be able to view the in-class instruction through video. Then, as we do in class, I'm going to allow for class lab time for you to practice the skills that we have considered during that class meeting. So, let's get to it. Uh, pause the video, download the class resource, and then restart this video and cook along with me and pause as you need to. Also note that I have created a, a, a place online where you can write questions and hold any discussion. Uh, so that way, in case you have uh, questions like we would in class, you'll have a forum where you can communicate directly with me. And of course, email always works as well. So let's get started. Review of the basics and the intermediate techniques in Active Inspire. Remember that there are two interfaces, and I'm going to use both of them as I was doing in class. Uh, remember that to change, now that you've downloaded the software on your own machine, to change the interface, go to the View menu and click on the very bottom link, which as you can see is saying right now, Primary Look and Feel. So uh, if you've got the older kids version, then it's going to say primary. If you're in primary, then it's going to say the older kids version right here. So click on that and recognize when you do that, you have to close the app and then you have to open it up again from scratch and then you'll be in the, the other interface. Remember that there are layout differences in the primary. So when we look at uh, on this left hand part of the screen here you can see that all the browsers are all listed the property browser and the resource browser and the page browser and so on they're all listed up here in this left hand side uh, of the window uh, of the app and remember that some of them are, are located in like two of them are located in that area in the primary view but then you have to click on tools when you click on tools, it opens up on the bottom of the screen of the app all of these tools, and some of them are just regular tools like go to the web, and, and there's a timer available and so on, but all the browsers that are not uh, showing in the upper left-hand side 
are all listed here. So here you can see the resource browser, the object browser, the page browser. There's also the voting browser, but we're not going to be using that. You use that live in class if you have the, the uh, student response systems, the handheld clickers for the, for the students. So those are some of the, the, just the basic reminder of those things. One of the things that we looked at, and this is a review, we pulled answers out of a hat, so to speak. And the hat could be any graphic. So just a quick review as to what that's all about. Remember that when we click on, um, when we uh, look at a graphic, in this case I have a true hat here. I'll be a, a magician at this point. So here's my hat, and I created some answers. I created them by simply creating text boxes. And here's the text tool up here. I created things using that text tool, just like this. And then once I create that, I can highlight that text and then I can uh, change and modify that text uh, in, in terms of formatting as I need to. Now, having done that, I'm going to click on my pointer tool. I'm going to move this graphic on the side. I would drag whatever these things are, whether they're text, whether they are graphics, they could be student names, they could be questions, they could be answers, they could be vocab words. I'm going to separate them out as you can see here, so that when we go roll over them, they'll be hot. And notice the pointer is getting hot as I roll over one of these. Uh, so I'm going to separate them out so they're not all clumped together. I'm then going to put the hat back here, whatever graphic that's going to be. And then I'm going to open one of the browsers. If I open up the object browser, then and once you find the browser uh, uh, on both uh, the primary and the older kids version, and then the, the dialogues all appear the same. So notice the image over here. I'm going to click on the image, and I look over here. Oh, yes, sure, that, sure enough, that's the one. It's the hat. The first thing I'm going to do is lock the hat. So if I right-click over it, it says locked. And sure enough, it is locked. Notice up here in the upper left-hand corner, image number two has a little padlock by it. So if I needed to, to get rid of the padlock, if I needed to move that graphic again, then I could simply click on this uh, to right-click on it, and, and I, can, uh, I, can, I can access it. So there's a little menu here, and here it says lock, and I could simply unlock it. You have to do it from, uh, to unlock the hat. You'd have to do it from the object browser, because no longer can I touch the hat. Anything I'm touching now are things that are behind. So I could pull these things out just like that. And this makes for a, a fun, engaging, uh, interactive activity with our students. We also looked at Magic Ink. So let's take a, uh, take a look at Magic Ink for a moment. Um, we said Magic Ink, we could do one of two things. We could do Magic Ink by itself, like a scratch-off ticket, or we could do Magic Ink in the form of a, um, with a revealing object. So let's just do a quick review. Once you start... Uh, using Magic Ink, it will appear over here in your toolbar, but right now I'm going to go up to the menu, I'm going to go into Tools, and I'm going to open Magic Ink for the first time right there. Again, once I start using it, it should appear over in your toolbar. So here I'm carrying my Magic Ink with me, and here's a good early childhood example. Oh, look at that. I'm scratching these off just like I would with a lottery ticket. Now, here's a little trick. Just a reminder, if I click on the pointer, I can actually pick up the Magic Ink. Notice I can move it around, and I can move this to other places. So it's kind of like a Harry Potter cloak of invisibility type of thing. Now, a couple things to note here as a review. If, if this does not work for you, then something, uh, something has gone wrong in terms of the, the object browser. So when I look at the browser, Remember, I compared this to a lottery ticket scratch-off situation. The film that you're going to that you're going to use, like in this case, would be the uh, the thing that covers the hopefully winning numbers on your lottery ticket. Uh, the film in this case is an Easter egg graphic, so it's just a graphic covering something. And really, in class, I could do this and just move this, but it's more exciting to use it, more engaging with the uh, Magic Ink. So this object has to be in the top layer. When I look over here in my object browser, sure enough, all of these Easter egg graphics are in the top layer. Notice it says top, 
And then there's middle, bottom, and background, all possibilities. So what has to be in the top layer? The film, so to speak, that, that stuff that becomes dirt <laughs> when you scratch it off with a coin on a lottery ticket, uh, that film needs to be right up here in the top layer. Above that, we're going to put the pen. And notice I have three pens, because I've got three separate magic inks created right now. The middle layer would be any of these objects. Like here, I've got, uh, I've got letter A underneath. So if I were to I'll take another one here to show it, I'll remove this. My W, and I click on it. Oh, here it is. It is in the middle layer. Text number 12, that's the W, is in the middle layer. So if that's not in the middle layer, then I would also poke through it. I, I would see right through this thing. So just to show that to you, I am going to take text 12 and drag it up here to the top layer. And now I'm going to drag a magic ink over here. Look at that. The W is invisible. Now I'm going to go and correct that. I'm going to take text 12 and drop it down in the middle layer. Ah, oh, now it appears. So realize that if this, ma like a magic ink type of activity fails for you, guaranteed it's going to have something to do with your placement of the objects. In the top layer, in the object browser, you should have the magic ink pen. You're going to have graphics or whatever is going to be covering uh, the, that's like the film on the lottery ticket. And finally, the middle layer is going to be any of the text or anything that's behind that you want to scratch off and reveal that stuff. Those things, whether it's in this case text, letters, um, or another graphic, whatever it's going to be, uh, those objects have to be in the middle layer. So let's take a look at Magic Ink now with a revealing object. So at this point, I see that I have three boxes. I've got three different times. It's a nice activity for our young students. Uh, here I've got a clock. So I'm going to ask the students to determine what time is on the clock. And I've got a revealing object over here. So instead of just grabbing a magic ink this time and scratching these blocks off. Instead, I'm going to drag in the middle of this revealing object, a magic ink. And then I have to, I have to group the magic ink with, together with this revealing object. So let's go work on those things. First of all, I created three different times. These are text boxes. Just drag them across. put these times underneath so the students can discover them. So when I look at this, notice in my object browser, these squares, so like the film, if you will, on top of the lottery ticket, they're located on the top. I have in a top layer. I've got my revealing object in the top layer as well. If I don't, it's going to kind of go behind different things and it'll lose its it's spunk <laughs> and it's excitement as we do that it'll start to disappear and sometimes certain parts of it won't function properly um, down here I've got in the middle layer I've got the, the three texts that I'm going to reveal I've dragged them behind these objects these these squares and notice that all the things to be revealed are in the middle layer as we already saw if I drag them up or by accident have them located in the top layer I'm going to see through those as well, and that's not, the whole activity is going to fail. So, I have things in the, in the proper order. Just keep in mind, if any of these activities fail, it means that top layer, middle layer, something is wrong in terms of the objects you placed in which of these layers. So, having done this, my next step is, I'm going to move my clock over a little bit, give me a little roll. I'm going to move my revealing object here. Now, this, I got this one, this this hand lens, I did get this from the resource browser uh, under gadgets. However, you could go online, like Google Images, 
and you could grab any kind of object as we saw in class. So let me go and grab my magic ink and I'm going to look and see if it's over here in the toolbar. I don't see it yet. So I'll go into tools and I'll choose magic ink from there. I'm now going to drag out my magic ink. So I'm being careful because I, I can actually make this whole object invisible if I'm not careful. If I got too carried away with magic ink, you notice I'm taking away parts of it as I go. Uh, I'm going to click on the arrow. Now I've got a magic ink in here and I can see it up top here in the object browser. Here's my revealing object. They're both in the top. Excellent. Now what I have to do is group these two together. So let me do it. I'm going to grab a conservative highlight. When I say conservative, notice I have grabbed, I, I drew a highlight just a little bit around here. If I'm not careful, if I'm kind of willy-nilly with, uh, with dragging these things, if I draw like a big highlight like this, look at that. I also grabbed the clock in here too. And that can be problematic. So well, after I group these, all these pieces are going to move as one object. So let me grab right around here, very conservatively. I know that I grabbed two objects. Let's look at this middle marquee here. The one that shows is grouped. It's the one that shows two objects with a highlight around it. It's now enabled. It was disabled prior to this. I click on it. It glows. This is now ready to work. I've got Magic Ink and Revealer Object. Look at that. Now this will be a fun activity, a good engaging activity for the students. Is it 10.07? And then we could call on a student. We could call on a student to come up here and play with this device. Let's pick one of those blocks. 10.10, is that the right time? Why or why not? 2.10, is that right or is it wrong? Good engaging activity. On our next slide, let's do another review of this. Here I've got a big graphic, and here I've got texts. Okay, so all these different texts, so these will point out different. Here's us in the Wyoming Valley. What I need to do is take this big graphic, which when I clicked on it, I see it over here in the object browser, image one. Not only do I have to put it on top of everything, but I really have to put it in the top layer. Because now in the top layer, this becomes the film, and then I can scratch through it like a lottery ticket. So once again, in class, if I'm going to do it this way, I would select Magic Ink, and I would say, okay, class, let's go scratch something. Oh, look at that. There's Erie. Can anybody find where Wyoming Valley is? And I could look around here. Nope, not there. Luzerne County. Oh, there it is. So we could do it this way. And we could do that scratching live. Another thing we could do is, on our next slide, we could use a revealing object. So here, I downloaded a graphic from Google Images, and it's a state of Pennsylvania graphic. And I chose one that had a blank middle in here because I could drag my, be a perfect place to drag out my, my uh, magic ink. So first of all, let me go position these graphics. So here I'm going to resize this. Remember, only one handle, the lower right-hand corner, is the, is the one that's going to let you proportionally resize. So I'm going to take the Liberty Bell, place it down by Philadelphia. I'm going to resize the Gettysburg one, and I'm going to move it here. And I'm going to take the Erie one. Not Erie as in ghosts now, but as in Erie, Pennsylvania. And I'm going to put it up here in this area. Now, as I did before, if I click on this, this overall image, it's image one, it's right at the bottom. Get that up to the top layer. Oh, good. Not only did it go on top of everything and hide it, but in addition to that, it's now the film that's in the top layer. So my revealing, my revealer and my magic ink will be able to scratch through this. Okay, so top layer is good, middle layer is good. Now, let me drag a magic ink in here. Now, I see a little problem already. I've got this, this uh, text here. So let me get this text out of here for now because I need some room so I don't accidentally, when I do the grouping, so I don't grab all of these objects together. So let me go up to Tools, Magic Ink. And I'm going to draw out a little magic ink in the middle here. This will make a, a good, fun, and engaging activity and a worthwhile activity um, learning-wise for our students. Okay, so I have my magic ink in there. Notice, 
pen, magic ink is on top. This image one, that's the this piece down here. Uh, that's my film. Uh, I'm going to grab my pointer. The other thing that would be helpful is if I were to take this Pennsylvania graphic, let me find it, it's image five. Let me put it in the top layer as well. I'm going to put it toward the top here because the pen and that revealing object should be right on the very top. Let me drag a oops, let me drag a conservative highlight around these objects. There they are. Press on the grouped. Now let's see if it works. Yes, it does. Look at that. I'm scratching right through all of these activities. It's looking good. So you can see that we can do live teaching using Magic Ink and scrape it off live with the students. Or we can set up in advance a revealing object. And then we can simply scrape the, uh, the scratch the little Magic Ink painted in there and then draw a highlight around the two, press that middle marquee to group, and then provided that you have the top layer, middle layer, uh, it, uh, all the objects in the appropriate place, now it's going to work just fine. So having reviewed, uh, first of all, having uh, downloaded the software and having reviewed some of the basic and intermediate skills of working with Active Software or Active Inspire, uh, let's now, like we do in class, let's have some lab time to practice these skills. So I'd like you to create a flip chart. So create a brand new one and teach any topic. So it could be on any topic. The topic does not matter. What I'd like you to do is to add the following elements in some way, somewhere throughout that flip chart. Use text. It's not going to be hard. You're probably going to definitely include in text somewhere in there. Insert a graphic. Remember we said to insert a graphic, as long as you're using Google Chrome, you can drag the graphic into Active Inspire. Insert one hypertext link. Now in class we had looked at that. Remember it's in the menus. You say insert a, a link. It's a web link. You paste in the URL. And then you decide what form is it going to take. Is it going to be text? Are you going to show the actual text of the URL? Are you going to uh, choose some uh, existing object on the slide? Are you going to make it what they call an act, an action object, which is kind of like a, an action button in PowerPoint. So at least one act, uh, one hypertext link somewhere in your slideshow. And then let's experiment with some of the resources that they have that they provide for us in the resource browser. Drag out one background from the resource browser on at least one of your flip chart slides. And then we saw that there's a lot of activities. There's pre-made activities. In class, we had looked at uh, one uh, that was a coloring activity for young kids. And of course, knowing me, I, I uh, chose the airplane to color that. Um, I also chose a block activity for young kids in which they could choose the blocks with letters on them and just drag them up and, and form words on the slide. I also, uh, for, for older students, I dragged out uh, another resource, which was the periodic uh, table of elements. So there, there are great activities, and there's a whole bunch of them. I'd like you to take a look at them and see what's all available there. It does not take a lot of work on the part of the teacher, and yet these pre-made activities are engaging. Um, they're fun for the kids, but they're very engaging, and they're also highly, highly educational. And then let's try the things we looked at here. Uh, let's pull some object or text out of a hat. Now, again, you don't have to use a hat graphic, but have some kind of graphic in which you uh, pull some kind of object out of that uh, out of that uh, out of that graphic. And finally, let's create a magic ink activity. Now, ideally, you'd like to use a revealing object, uh, but you don't have to. You can create a, a one without the revealing object if you like, as we're just getting started and it's kind of a hectic week for everybody as we transition to online classes. So does it matter how many slides are in this flip chart? No. 
I'm simply going to go through with this checklist and see if you insert a text, insert a graphic, did a link, and so on. And you'll notice the point values here. So out of 10 points, uh, you'll have a percentage out of all of these points. So uh, now it's time for lab uh, experiment. If you have any questions, uh, either email me or write to me. If it's for the benefit of the whole class, write to me on our discussion board that I've created for questions and uh, problems and, and concerns. And uh, uh, notice that I'm going to create a date when this is due. Now, even though we're asynchronous, you don't have to do this at the same time as everybody else. Uh, but I, I don't want everybody to fall behind. So if this is a Wednesday class, then I will uh, make a date due uh, Friday. Now, instead of Friday by the morning, I will have it Friday at midnight because that way you won't fall behind. If you get behind on these things, uh, the online experience will be uh, kind of painful for you and you're not going to get all of the, uh, the educational value out of it. So have fun practicing these skills and I look forward to seeing you at our next online class.